Hi everyone, back here for another video. Let me show you today how I set up my iPad to connect to an external monitor and my desk setup with some new accessories that I got. I will show you how to connect to a monitor, the M2 iPad Pro that supports full external display and the iPad that does not support full external display, which I have here is the iPad mini 6. Stay tuned until the end as you will also see the new Logitech K380S keyboard and the new Pebble Mouse 2 plus how I use this keyboard and mouse not only with my iPad but also with my iPhone. I made a video earlier this year showing the details how I connect my iPad to my monitor. It is basically still the same process so check out that video if you want to know the details. What has changed since then is my desk setup and of course the improved version of Stage Manager that came with iPad OS 17. I'm using here the iPad Pro 11 inch with the M2 chip and my new iPad stand is the Cooksview X36 magnetic folding stand. This is nicely tucked at the corner of my desk and it's not taking up too much space and I can pull it out when I need to use my iPad whether for writing, video calls or of course when I connect it to my monitor. I've also made a video about this and the link is in the description so you can watch it later too. I can also set up my iPad mini 6. I have two options here, but first I needed to attach this magnetic patch at the back of the iPad mini 6. It doesn't really look nice, but anyway, I have my iPad case on and I don't see the back side all the time. I can then use this with this folding stand that can elevate the iPad mini 6 for approximately 9 to 10 centimeters. And this stand is okay as long as you don't need to touch the screen of the iPad. Because once you touch the screen, it will wobble and it wobbles a lot. So the second option is to use this Moft Snap Tablet Stand. Although this one is for my iPad Pro 11 inch but I can still use it with my iPad mini and it looks okay in landscape mode but it will be too wide in portrait mode. Anyway, I'm just trying to maximize what I have on hand. Now on to connecting the iPads to the monitor. I mentioned many times in my other videos that I'm using a monitor that is not USB-C but uses HDMI. So I need an adapter and I have here two adapters that I use alternately. Both of these have long cables so I can run it behind my desk and I can hide it and keep my desk looking clean. These two adapters have other ports that I can use with my iPad like the USB-A port or the SD card slots but the main ones are the HDMI port of course and the USB-C port for charging. I talked about these adapters in my other desk set of videos. You can find the links of those videos in the description below. Once I've connected the HDMI cable to the adapter and to the iPad, I can now use it with my monitor. I received many questions in my other videos if their iPad will work with the monitor or not. Well, it depends on what iPad you use. iPads with the M1 or M2 chip will have the capability to do the full display on the external monitor. And when Stage Manager is switched on on the iPad, I can drag apps from the iPad to the monitor and vice versa. But of course, you need a keyboard and mouse to use the apps that are displayed on the external monitor. If you have an iPad with the M1 or M2 chip, you should be able to find the arrangement settings inside the display and brightness settings. Then you can turn off mirror display. You can also find the settings multitasking and gestures. So go to the external display tab and that's where you can turn on or off the mirror display. If you don't see these settings, even if you're using an iPad with the M1 or M2 chip, unfortunately, I don't have the actual solution. What I see from the comments in my other videos from other users is that it seems it could be because of the compatibility of the HDMI cable or the adapter to the iPad or the monitor's resolution is not supported. And this is what I saw in Apple's community discussion site. If you are using an iPad that does not have the M1 or M2 chip like my iPad mini 6 here, then when I connect this to my monitor, it will be mirrored only. So older iPads like iPad Air 4 or iPad 9 or 8 or even the new iPad 10th gen will be like this. It only has the mirrored display. 
I used the shift screen app before and some have asked if I still use this. I guess it's obvious that I don't use it anymore since I have my M2 iPad Pro. If you already have the shift screen app and you purchase it, then just keep using it if you work mainly on web apps as those are the only ones that work on shift screen. No other apps can work on shift screen, only web apps. If you don't have shift screen yet, I don't recommend you purchasing it. It hasn't been updated since it was launched. There are a few things that you can get a full screen display on the monitor with a non M1 or non M2 iPad, such as viewing photos or videos from the photos app. And you can even do a split screen or slide over screen to have another app open together with it. Another is the presentation mode on, on Keynote or GoodNotes. And again, you can also do a split screen or slide over beside it. Now moving back to my iPad Pro 11 inch with the M2 chip, now that Stage Manager has been updated, it's a bit more smoother to use compared to before. We can now easily add apps on the current stage by just pressing and holding on to the Shift key and clicking on the app. And the apps now can be moved or resized more freely without those predefined slots that Apple did before. And no, we still cannot turn off the iPad's display and just work with the external monitor. So maybe just dim the iPad's display to the lowest brightness. Now, you cannot use the apps that are displayed on the external monitor if you don't have a keyboard or mouse connected. Only the iPad's display is usable without the keyboard or mouse because you can use the touchscreen. So today I'm using the new Logitech K380 keyboard, also called the Pebble Keys 2 K380S. This looks exactly the same as the older K380 versions. What's different is that this black keyboard now comes with the white device switch keys here. Plus the Thai language that I have is now printed on the keycaps and no need to put on the stickers. Also new are some of the function keys. F4 is to go back to the home screen or tap it twice and it will show the app switcher. But looks like it just only shows the app switcher on the iPad's display and not on the external monitor. F5 is now for spotlight search. F6 is the back key and so far I've only made it work only in Safari to go back to the previous page. F7 looks like it is for dictation, but it doesn't work on the iPad. F8 is to show the emojis, and F9 is to take a screenshot. Last is the delete key. Now, when I press it with the function key, it will lock the iPad. Oh, and one more thing. Now, pressing the escape key with the function key will change the function keys to work as standard function keys. Next is the Pebble Mouse 2, also called the M350S. In terms of design and form, nothing new is exactly the same as the M350. What is new is that it is now a multi-device mouse. Well, the previous one was kind of multi-device too, like if you connect a device by Bluetooth and another one via the USB receiver, then you can use two devices at the same time. But the M350S can be connected by Bluetooth to three devices. The scrolling looks to be better than the previous version as it's not that jumpy, but it's still kind of there. Subscribe and stay tuned for a full review of the K380S and M350S. I like using this keyboard and mouse because I can use it with my iPad and also with my iPhone. So that brings me to the last accessory on my desk and this is the Kuxiu X40 Magnetic Folding Charging Station. I can use this to charge my iPhone and at the same time it serves as the stand. 
So whenever I need to use my iPhone, I can still type using the keyboard by just pressing the device switch here. And I can also use the mouse with my iPhone. However, I need to turn on assistive touch in order to make the mouse work. It's a bummer that the shortcuts automation does not work on this mouse and even the keyboard. In fact, I was hoping to create an automation that when I connect the mouse to my iPhone, it will automatically turn on assistive touch, but no, it's not possible, at least from what I've tried. So if you have a way to do it, let me know in the comment section below. My workaround instead is that I created a shortcut to toggle the assistive touch with just one click. So when I run this shortcut, it will toggle the assistive touch from off or to on. And now the mouse is working on my iPhone. And once I disconnect the mouse, I configured the menu round button here to run the same shortcut, which in this case basically will turn off assistive touch when I double tap on it. Using this charging station makes it convenient for me to use my devices. And more importantly, it charges my devices at decent speed. It can charge the iPhone at maximum of 20 watts while safely charging my AirPods and my Apple Watch too. My iPhone can be charged in portrait mode and also in landscape mode. And I can also charge it with my iPhone case on and it's because my case is MagSafe compatible. This is a sleek charger that does not take up too much space and when I'm done using it, I can fold it and I can leave it on my desk just like this. And when I travel, I can take this with me easily as this comes with this carrying pouch along with a cable and charging brick. This saves me the trouble of packing several cables and the mess it can make when charging it individually. If you're interested on this charging station from Cooksview, check out the link below and you can also find a 10% discount code. So that's my current setup. Let me know in the comments if you're using the same setup and how is it working for you. And that's it. Thanks for watching.